Hey guys, this is Nessie, and welcome to part three of the Team Craft Beginner's Guide. In this video, we will be going over the Crafting Simulator tool. This tool is insanely useful for crafters. If you're not a crafter, you can feel free to skip this video. Check out part two if you haven't already, as it has a lot of good tips for making gill for both battle jobs and gatherers. To get to the Crafting Simulator, go to the menu bar on the left side of the screen under the General tab. When you click on this, it gives you a choice between searching for a recipe or making a custom rotation. Selecting custom rotation does not populate a recipe for you to craft, but instead brings up a recipe configuration box. This lets you edit the R level, or recipe level, the level required to craft, the required progress and quality, and the durability. It also allows you to select whether the craft is an expert recipe. Now let's explore the recipe search. Click on the crafting simulator again to bring up the search. For our example today, let's use the rarefied Psycon Baberoy. This box works the same as the search box on the main page, it just already has the recipe filter applied to it. Once it has found the recipe, go ahead and click the blue check mark to load the simulator. There's a lot to go over on this page, so we will take it one step at a time. Under the configuration tab, you see the crafting job, which has been automatically set to culinarian. Underneath job, you can see the stats for your crafter have been imported in from your profile. If you have not already entered your stats into your profile, go check out part one of this series to see how to set up team craft with your crafter stats. You can also manually enter your stats, your level, and whether the class is a specialist, then click the blue apply stats button at the bottom. If you're going to put your stats in manually like this, do take care not to calculate your food buffs, medicine, or FC buffs in those stats. There's another spot we will add these consumables in a moment. If you put your stats in manually, you can also hit the Save to Profile button and the stats you entered will be automatically applied to that class in your profile. This saves you from having to enter your stats again for any crafts for that class. In the middle of the screen, we have the High Quality Ingredient section. As you can see, we have two items for this craft listed in this section. These are the only two materials for this craft that have the possibility of being high quality. I like to try and solve the craft without high quality items first, then adding them at the end if I am short on quality to see if I can get 100% with my current gear. To add these high quality items to the solver, you can type the number of high quality mats you want to use in the respective box, then hit apply HQ ingredients. This bumped up our starting quality of the craft. If you apply all high quality items, you are already almost at the first script breakpoint without having even used an ability. To the right of the high quality ingredient section, we have the consumable section. This is where you will add your food buffs, your medicine, and your free company buffs. Click on the down arrow to bring up a drop down menu and select which food you will be using. And do the same for medicine and free company actions. I like to try and solve the craft without these as well, and add them in to try and push the craft further if I need to. No point in wasting a consumable if it's not needed. Once you have selected your buffs, you can click apply consumables and it will add those buffs to your stats. If you look back to the left under Job, after selecting Food and Medicine, you can see Control has a plus 126 and CP has a plus 78. These are the bonuses applied by the consumables. Back under Consumables, if you plan on crafting everything with these buffs, you can click Save these consumables as default, and every craft you do on this job in the future will automatically apply the Food and Medicine. Now we're going to get to the fun part, actually crafting the items in the simulator. You scroll down the page to the bottom, you can see the crafting window similar to what it would look like in game. To the top left, we have the item we are crafting. Next to the item's name, we have an icon that looks like two half arrows with a circle around it. This button allows us to change the recipe. This brings up the recipe search menu again, as well as a warning stating all changes will be lost if not saved prior to choosing a new recipe. Click anywhere on the screen to get out of this pop-up. In the upper middle of the screen, you will see the class we are crafting on, as well as the buffed stats from the food and consumables. On the upper right, we have the step count, as well as a button that looks like a beetle. This button toggles snapshot mode, which makes it impossible to add to the rotation when it's selected. Warning, you can still remove from the rotation when snapshot mode is enabled. Below that is the progress bar, quality bar, and durability. One thing I want to point out on the quality bar, is that it shows the breakpoints for the different script tiers on the bar itself. This will only show up on collectible items. So if you're not trying to 100% the item, 
people want to get the minimum required collectability to hit the last tier, you know you need to reach 684 collectability or 6840 quality in order to achieve that. Directly below the progress bar is an indicator showing the exact number of quality remaining to reach 100% high quality. Below this is the current high quality percentage. And right below that is your CP. To the right is the reliability of your rotation. If your rotation uses abilities that have a chance to succeed under 100%, this will affect your reliability. Next to that is the average high quality, which will show you how often you can expect a high quality in item if your quality is not 100%. Finally, we have our modifiers bottom center of this section. This tells you how much progress or quality you can gain from using a synthesis or touch ability at that specific stage of the rotation. At the very bottom of the screen, you can see all the icons for the abilities available to your class. If you click on Compact on the right side, it will add the ability names to the icon, making the section much bigger but easier to see what the abilities are if you are unfamiliar with the icons. With that, we can start playing with the rotations. To add an ability to the rotation, you can click on the icon and it will be added to the rotation section. Let's click on Muscle Memory. As you can see, some things happened in the two sections above. The section directly above the abilities is the rotation window. The rotation window shows you every ability you have used thus far and the order that you used them. The section directly above that is your buffs window. In this window, it shows muscle memory gives five stacks of its buff. If we select another ability, that buff will count down with each step. Adding manipulation and waste not two shows their respective buffs. When we add these two buffs, the durability in the progress bar changes in real time. This is just like crafting in game, with a bit more information and a lot less risk. I'm going to fill in a bit more of this rotation real quick. As you can see, I hit 100% quality, but if you look at the numbers, I am way over. Let's remove one of the preparatory touches. To do this, Click on the icon in the rotation window. This removes the ability from the rotation. But Nessie, what if I got the order wrong on my rotation? Do I have to remove everything and start over? I'm glad you asked, random YouTube viewer. Let's say I wanted to put innovation at the beginning of the craft before all those preparatory touches. If the ability is already somewhere else in your rotation window, you can click on it and drag it to where you want it to be. This will slide everything after where you want it to the right, allowing you to place it where you want it to be in the rotation. If you haven't yet added the ability to the rotation window, you can click and drag it from the ability section to the part of the rotation you want to put it. This put me over the quality mark again though, so let's get rid of another preparatory touch. I'm just under the breakpoint, so let's add a basic touch at the end. This got me just over the breakpoint, but it's not really worth doing it this way. So let's move that touch back to before great strides. This put me at just over 100% while saving 22 CP. I'm happy with this, so let's finish off the craft. Well, crap. I went over the durability limit and failed the craft. We can just back things up from the last ability we put in and see if we can save it. If that happened in game, you'd likely lose your materials and your good mood. But with this being a simulated environment, you can practice your rotations all day, really get a good feel for what you can get out of each ability with no risk at all. And if I throw a veneration here and add that last groundwork back in, were completed. Just because this rotation works and gets you what you want for this craft does not mean it's optimized. Play around with the rotations and figure out what works best for you and your stats. Now that we have completed this rotation, there are a few things we can do with it. The blue icons on the right side is where I want to focus next. At the very top of this bar, there's an icon that looks like a floppy disk. If you've used a computer at all, I bet you know what this does. If you guess save, you're right. What saving this will do is put the rotation into the Crafting Rotations tab of the sidebar menu. If you go to the top of the screen, click the pencil icon, you can rename the rotation to whatever you want so you don't get confused later on when you have 50 rotations for different items. Let's name this one Endwalker Purple Scripts, which is what this recipe is for. Under the save is a button for resetting the rotation. If you hit this, everything you did will reset and it will allow you to start from scratch. The next two buttons are for importing from and exporting to a crafting optimizer. 
The button below that allows you to import a rotation from a macro. Let's say one of those fancy YouTubers put a rotation in their description and you want to know if it will work for you. Click that button, put the rotation in, and TeamCraft will automatically apply that rotation and solve the craft for you. If you're short quality or progress with that macro, you can find out here rather than in game. The next button down is my favorite button. The blue button with XIV on it is the in game macro generator. Click on this and it will print the rotation you made into macro form to copy and paste into a macro in game, letting you automate your craft for this recipe. You can have it automatically notify you when this craft is done with a sound, so you can craft while watching more of my content. To do this, make sure the include end of macro sound button is checked. I'll be honest. I have no earthly clue what the fixed notification button does, so let's skip that. The next button down is split macros before Fire God's Blessing. What this does is splits the macro into two, and the first thing the second macro will do is Fire God's Blessing. This is used to give a little protection in case your Fire God's comes up and the craft status is poor. This allows you to use Observe and start the second macro on normal instead of greatly diminishing your quality by trying to force it through on poor. The button after that is macro lock. This stops you from being able to use any other macros before the steps of the current macro have been completed. If you fat finger your macros a lot, this may be something you want to check off. Finally, we have include consumables notification. This will remind you to put your consumables on prior to each craft, and you can set a duration of how long the macro waits before it starts, giving you time to pop your consumables. Notification number changes the notification sound played at the end of the macro. You can test these out in game to hear what they sound like. If you play with high latency, the wait times in the macro may be too fast for you, causing you to miss abilities. The extra wait field can fix this. For every second you add in this field, the wait time in the macro goes up by one. So if muscle memory has a base wait of three seconds, putting one in the extra wait field will make muscle memory have a wait time of four seconds. This makes the macro slower, but saves you a headache when you fail a craft because an ability didn't go off. A word of warning, always test your macros in-game on the test craft prior to making an item. Sometimes you miss something, sometimes you copied the macro wrong. Errors happen. Do your due diligence, make sure everything is up to par before you craft with actual items. Let's X out of the macro window now. The next button down is minimum stats. What this button does is it repeatedly runs the rotation over and over, lowering the base stats until it fails. It will then give you the minimum stats required to successfully complete the craft with this rotation. This is useful if you're going to be sharing your macro with other people, so you know exactly what stats they need to have to be able to use the macro. The step-by-step -step report button prints out the analytics of the rotation, showing you exactly how much CP, progress, durability loss, and quality was gained or lost with each step. If you're finding this information useful, please hit that like button so it could be shared with more people. The next few buttons are fairly straightforward, so we will go over them quickly. The button under step by step prints out a link to the rotation to share with your friends, family, or whoever you feel like sharing that link with. You can set it to include the stats and consumables, and they will be preloaded when they arrive on the page. The rotation finder will search the community rotations to find a rotation that will work for the item you're trying to craft at the stats you're trying to craft it at or lower. If you click the button that says include rotations with required stats above yours, it will search again for all rotations regardless of stats. Share with the community allows you to put your rotation into that community list for other people to search for. And the heart allows you to favorite this rotation so it's easier for you to pull up in the future. And with that, our tutorial of the TeamCraft Crafting Simulator is done. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out in the comments and I will try and help you as much as I can. This is Nessie, and as always, take care of yourself.